We're in a very exciting time in neuroscience and particularly from the standpoint of an engineer. There's so much that we don't understand about the brain in general. There's a fundamental desire for people to understand who they are and what makes them different from one another. The brain really is the ultimate frontier. What's unique about the brain is that many different fields can contribute. What we're looking to do is foster collaboration within the societies. If you look at what the Brain Initiative is, it's really a catalytic endeavor. It, its purpose is to generate tremendous interest around the brain. One thing that's been pretty clear across brain initiatives has been the importance of engineering and technology. There's so much computer and hardware being designed that's based on neuro. A lot of the computational neuroscience that was developed 10, 15, 20 years ago is now being used by Google, by Facebook, by large tech companies. So from the United States with the Brain Initiative focusing on neural technologies, Human Brain Project in the EU focusing on computation and information technologies, the IEEE Brain Initiative is all about leveraging what IEEE has across all its societies, kind of um, create a critical mass of interest. And our end goal here is to be able to create workshops, standardization meetings, interact with commercial constituencies, government, uh, other academics to demonstrate the value that IEEE has. Our job is to promote the field and the I don't want to use the word educate, but interact with the public because they support our research. So the more we are able to create even only quote-unquote frameworks where people with different background can talk and discuss and brainstorm together, the better it is. The brain is super complex. It's composed of billions of neurons, thousands of structures, different kinds of neurons, different kinds of structures that each seem to be interconnected both structurally and functionally. It's still unclear what the standard model of the brain is, <laughs> like there's a standard model in physics. And so if you think about the 80 billion neurons in our brain, each one of them being incredibly complex and actually different from one another, the complexity is actually at multiple scales. We can see the gross activity from the surface of the brain with EEG, or fMRI, we can see individual cells with a couple of electrodes, but it's the in-between range, in a, in a range of 100 to uh, thousands of cells simultaneously, it's needed badly. One of the things across all brain initiatives that one sees uh, in the world is what are technologies that can help us better measure neural activity. Anesthesia has significant effects on kids, we think, and certainly on older adults in particular. Why is that? Are there ways that we can mitigate that? Can I come up with better ways to monitor the brain under anesthesia? Our ability to treat people with, with mental illness is really limited by our lack of understanding of how the brain works. Not only people suffering from neurological disease, but also aging members of the society. And then there's the whole idea of how to measure activity of behaving animals or humans in natural contexts. When uh, we have to drive some complex machine like an airplane, which kind of activity is going on in the brain? Landing gear. Brain uh, is complicated and produce a lot of uh, uh, signals that are difficult to disentangle. The artifacts produced by muscles and eye movement and separate these artifacts from brain activity. But we are developing engineering technology to still to read out the signal buried by huge amount of noise and then turn that into reliable control signal. There's multi-facets to these uh, worldwide initiatives, but the one piece that is very much in the sweet spot of IEEE are in brain-machine interfaces. And so the idea, basically, in motor BMIs is to decode brain activity in paraplegics, for instance. The brain uses the body to interact with the world. 
Okay, so we think that when we touch something that we feel in the hand that is touching, now, we feel in the brain. If the signals that come from the brain are unable to reach an arm, then what we will try to do is to use the brain signals themselves that will then control a robotic device. There you're building a real system that's closed loop, that has power constraints, sensors that are measuring signals, uh, challenging signal processing, control theory. Building such an interface um, is kind of at the core of what engineers do all the time. I think of IEEE not just in terms of a professional society, but a society that also is critical in standards. And at some point, things like brain-machine interfaces are going to be at the position where standardization is going to be key if commercialization will be realized. It makes a lot of sense for IEEE to have its own brain initiative. We have a different uh, training than neuroscientists or physicists. And uh, in particular, uh, we're problem solvers. And actually, if you look at the White House Brain Initiative, the I stands for innovation. The N is neurotechnologies. It's the recognition that for neuroscience, they, they need engineers. We can help, for instance, in uh, areas of productization, standardization, as well as technology development from communication, signal processing, power. If you think of neurons as these you know, information units, that they're just communicating bits of information on the order of milliseconds, then maybe information theorists can come and play a role in helping us quantify neuronal interaction. Everyone's looking at it from a different perspective, and it's going to take all of those different viewpoints. We have to bring the people from different disciplines, from computer science, from electrical engineering, from biomedical engineering, but we need to make sure that we have also medical people are involved. So that's how all the different sort of societies can contribute to understanding what the brain is doing. So the interaction across all of our societies brings kind of tremendous amount of leverage and expertise. It's a big problem that we need to get many people involved. We're not going to be able to do this with any one lab or any one scientist. It is going to take a community effort. I think it's wonderful for IEEE to involve in this process.